Hello, welcome to week two of elementary social studies. In this week, we want to be looking at a very broad, a very quick summary of um, world history, an overview of world history. This information is taken from the first several um, sections uh, of chapter two in your course text, the social studies content text. Um, and that's kind of where we're going to start. And like I said, this is going to be a high-level, very broad uh, sort of synthesis of some of the things that we're looking at. So please be sure to take a look at the first several pages uh, in Chapter 2, as, as denoted in the syllabus. Um, the, what we want to look at first is the early humans, as, where life began, how life began, um, that is up to debate. You have a creationist approach. You have a evolutionary approach. Where it started specifically, you have different places in Africa that they believe, maybe now places in, in uh, Asia. But what we know about the early civilizations comes to us through different methods of analysis. These two methods that are worth noting are archaeology and anthropology. And these can oftentimes be confused with one another. Archaeology, as the book denotes, is the study of human history and cultural through material. So archaeology is studying the past through stuff, as opposed to anthropology, which is the study of culture, both, both in the context of, their, of cultural comparisons um, between one and another. So both sets of skills are used and sometimes overlap in determining um, information about the ancient past, okay? What we do know, though, is that the very earliest civilizations began in what was now known as Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia um, means the land between two rivers, which would be the Tigris and Euphrates. An easy way to remember Mesopotamia is mostly now modern-day Iraq. The modern-day country of Iraq is where some of the earliest forms of civilization occurred in the world. Um, the first known civilization that we know of was the Sumerians, and it's through them and through the different societies in Mesopotamia where we begin to see the first forms of um, settlement post the agricultural revolution. Prior to the agricultural revolution, humans were nomadic. Nomadic means to travel around. They were hunter-gatherers, meaning they followed animals for food and they gathered nuts and berries and other sorts of food to eat. Then all of a sudden, somebody realized, holy crap, I can throw seeds in the ground, I can dump some water on it, and it grows. That, believe it or not, is revolutionary in human history, the fact that we can begin to farm. We call that the agricultural revolution. And that is the beginnings of what we now call civilization, which allowed the Sumerians and all those other civilizations in Mesopotamia to... Um, like the Babylonians and the Phoenicians and all sorts of different ones. It's the agricultural revolution or farming that allows civilization, people to stay in one place. That's what allows it to happen. Um, and it allows people to start forming towns and then eventually cities and then eventually walls and then trades and arts and religion and government. All those things happen because of the agricultural revolution. Of course, you have the other ancient civilizations like the Egyptians along the Nile. That was largely due because of the fact that they were relatively sheltered from uh, invasion. Mesopotamia, they could be attacked on all sides. Egypt, really from the east and from the south. Um, and Egypt had the Nile. Of course, everybody knows ancient Egypt, Nile, right? We know about that. Uh, the Nile, with its relatively uh, on-schedule fl annual floodings, allowed for some of the best farm ground in the world. Uh, and... In ancient Egypt, through many different types of things, we have also learned uh, lots of innovations that have happened there. Um, but again, just denoting that it was the civilization along the, the Nile, as opposed to Mesopotamia, it was the Tigris and Euphrates. You also have in India now, you hear more talk of India, along the Indus River Valley. Uh, that is uh, where you want to think about. You might see a question about that somewhere along the lines in the content portion. Uh, the Indus River Valley was the, the different um, groups of people that lived in India, okay? Now, moving on from the uh, far ancient world to the, the Greeks, 
And think of it shifting west. Civilization begins to you and I what we would call the Middle East, okay? Civilization, Western civilization, then shifts west into the Mediterranean, into the Greek city-states, okay? Um, it's here in Greece that we begin to see... Um, some of the first forms of what looks like modern day society. Ancient Greece, originally part of the Minoans and the, and the Mycenaeans, um, they took the culture from the Middle East, people who traded, and formed what we believe to be the Greek culture. Um, it's in Greece where they form, formed small city states known as polis, um, and it's the Greeks who originated the areas of philosophy, drama, the Olympics, um, the arts and architecture, that kind of thing. Um, the two main Greek city-states you want to keep in mind, um, Athens and Sparta. Two very different. Sparta was military and warlike. It was an oligarchy. Athens, um, as we all know, was the first place to experiment with um, democracy. In, in a, not, not in the terms that you and I think of it, but in an ancient version of democracy. It's also in Athens that we have the three great philosophers of Socrates, Plato, and Aristotle. Um, you have some of the great mathematicians like Pythagoras. Y'all took probably uh, um, geometry in high school. That's You can thank that guy for that. The ancient writings of uh, Homer, like the poems, the Odyssey, and the Iliad. Uh, and, of course, the great Trojan War and, of course, the Peloponnesian War. Can't forget Alexander the Great, who single-handedly conquered most of the known world by the time he was like 23. So in terms of success, he's got me beat. Um, Short-lived, he died when he was young, his empire fell apart, but he single-handedly spread Greek culture all around the world and throughout the Middle East, which is why most of our ancient texts, including the Christian Bible and the Jewish uh, translations that have survived, came to us in Greek. Moving on to the Romans. This is tough because the Romans cover about a thousand years of history, and I'm going to try to give you some Roman history in, I don't know, maybe two minutes. Um, here's a good way to remember the Romans. The Romans were originally small kingdoms, kind of like Greek city-states, city-states that had kings. Then they moved to a republic, and then from a republic they moved to an empire. Okay? So really three stages. Kingdoms, republic, empire. It's during the kingdom phrase that eventually at one point one guy like conquered a bunch of people and said, hey, I'm going to be the king above all of the other ones. Um, and then a group of people got together, they killed him, and they formed the Republic. The Republic lasted for a few hundred years, and it's the, um, it's the transition from Republic to Empire, why people in the, in the Roman world were so afraid of kings, because... Um, they because of what they saw happening. Um, important to note, in, during the years of the Republic, the Romans fought an epic um, series of wars spanning about a hundred or so years with uh, Carthage, called the Punic Wars. Carthage was the ancient civilization in North Africa. Um, that's important to note. Um, the the, eventually Rome wins. Rome completely raises Carthage to the ground. Carthage is like modern-day Tunisia, northern Africa. Um, they completely destroy everything, and they sow salt into the ground so deep that they could never farm again. Uh, still to this day, can't farm it because Rome ruined it in like 200 and some BC. Um, moving on to the what you could be considered maybe the first tyrant, I guess, in the Roman world. It would be Julius Caesar. He was gaining too much power. People didn't like it. They killed him. Event called the Ides of March. And you have the assassination of Julius Caesar. Leads to a series of wars. And after Caesar, his adopted grandnephew, uh, his name was Octavian, he changes his name to Caesar Augustus. Um, those of you who are familiar with religion and Christianity, um, right around this time of year, you oftentimes hear the Bible quoted uh, in, um, by Christians, the opening with the line from the Bible that says, in those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken in the entire Roman world. Hey, fancy that, that a historical figure got noted in uh, the Bible. Uh, that's who that guy was, Caesar Augustus. Oftentimes noted as the first emperor of the Roman um, Empire. He begins the Roman Empire, expands it through war, 
Um, he had a series of peace, though, a time of peace called the Pax Romana, where he did lots of stuff um, and for the Roman Empire, but Caesar Augustus is probably the first emperor. Uh, the line of emperors lasts until roughly 470-some A.D. Um, a quick note on the B.C. and A.D. Some of you who are familiar with history know that a time before the year zero and on was called B.C. B.C. has traditionally stood for before Christ and uh, has traditionally now, after the year zero and on, has been considered A.D. or Anno Domino, which means in the year of our Lord, so currently it would be 2017 A.D. Um, that is the old way of recording human history in time. They now have changed it to B.C.E. and C.E. B.C.E. stands for Before the Common Era, and C.E. stands for the Common Era. That is a, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, a more politically correct way of, of denoting time in human history. Um, B.C. A.D. is still recognized, um, but in, in more modern scholarly work, you're starting to see B.C.E. and C.E. used um, during that time period. Important to note as we move into roughly around 312 A.D. or uh, C.E., the Roman Emperor Constantine is the guy who legalized Christianity for the Romans. You can thank um, the the reason why Christianity is still around today, um, because of this guy. He mandated that um, all of the Roman Empire become Christian. And so it happened. It came to pass, and Constantine was the guy who did that. There is, um, during this time period too, during the Roman Empire, I should have, I should back up, sorry. It's kind of confusing you now because I'm not going in chronological order. I should back up to around like 30 AD or 30 CE. Um, it's around the time where there is a historic figure named Jesus. Um, Christians believe that he was the Son of God and the Messiah. Uh, others in different religions and outside of religion believe that he was just simply a great prophet or a great philosopher or a great teacher, whatever you want to title you want to call him. Um, he was, as it was recorded in um, the Christian Bible, or also known as the New Testament, he was crucified and they believed he was the Son of God, he rose again, and Christians believe that it's through him that salvation is attained. Others believe that he just was simply a historic figure who got crucified by uh, the Roman Empire. Um, but it's important to note that it's this person who influenced the guy named Paul. And Paul is one of the people who single-handedly wrote the vast majority of what Christians now call the New Testament. And uh, Paul helped spread... Um, at the time, it was considered a cult, now known as a wide-world religion of Christianity. Um, he's one of the single-handed figures to do that. I only point that out simply because um, the history of Christianity may come up somewhere in a test or a quiz. Um, back up to then 312 CE or AD, um, Constantine, Christianity, legalizes it. Rome eventually was conquered. Um, it, we, Rome didn't have like an official ending. Some people say, when did the Roman Empire fall? Well, there's different dates. It's, so, it's sort of slowly imploded. Um, things started falling apart. It was too worried about other issues to focus on the broader issues. Um, it became poor. There was infighting. There was civil wars. Fell apart. It was invaded. Um, eventually came to pass. And that moves into the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages should be defined by... Um, religion. We should be thinking of religion, particularly Christianity. You should also remember in the Middle Ages, it is where you get a vast distinction between Europe, now embodied, embodying Western civilization, and the Middle East, which has become considered now the Muslim world. And it's in the Middle Ages where you get the stark contrast between the Christian world and the Islamic world. And that is very important. This comes to pass in a war uh, known as the Crusades, where religion uh, becomes the focal point of these warring factions. Um, a couple other very high-level things to think about. Um, as you move into the year 1066, it's the year that William the Conqueror of France invades England successfully and brings about uh, change to uh, Great Britain. It's later on then, um, the signing of the Magna Carta in 1215 by King John that limits the power 
of the king, a trial by jury for barons and other people, uh, and some limitations on uh, taxation. That's a big deal. Um, in France, you begin to see absolute monarchy, meaning that the king is solely responsible for everything. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it's also in this time in the Middle Ages that the Pope, or the leader of the Christian church, gains power, influence, money, and wealth. Um, they are a very influential person historically. Important to note that that person is still around. That is still a role that is played today. Um, another major event that comes to pass uh, around the year 1348 and lasts for oh, about 100 years or so is the Black Plague or the Black Death or the Bubonic Plague, whatever you want to call it. Good to know, killed lots of people. Lots of people. We're talking maybe as many as several hundred million people. Um, shifted the power, the balance of power in European society. Um, people in Europe I enter the age of exploration. They start to explore the world. A guy by the name of Marco Polo. You guys know the name, right? The game Marco Polo. He's traveling around China, does it for about 22 years, uh, writes a book about it, talks about it, brings back a bunch of cool stuff, silk, spices, um, that kind of thing. And people get interested in trading with China, thus setting up and trading along the Silk Road, major trade route with the East. Moving into then what's called the Hundred Years' War, basically it's a big um, hissy fit between the kings of France and the kings of England, uh, Other another big important deal. There's other stuff to look at, including the Renaissance and the Reformation. Those I'll let you, that's, that's getting too deep for what I'm trying to do here. Um, the, Medi the Medieval Ages is still a time period obsessed with religion and a time period um, that was greatly destructive on Western Civ. Lots of people were killed through wars, through disease. Um, then comes the Enlightenment. The Enlightenment can begin around roughly the year 1500 or the 14th century and um, it begins with guys like uh, Copernicus and, and Kepler and Sir Isaac Newton and John Locke these guys and, and uh, Thomas Jefferson those kinds of guys enlightenment thinkers are people who began to think about the world differently they said maybe we can um, maybe there's a different way to think about the world Maybe there's, uh, we can use science. Maybe we can use math. Maybe we can use these skills to better the world. And maybe mankind can do that. There's also different Enlightenment musical people like Mozart, Beethoven, those kinds of guys. Um, all of those people embody this Enlightenment view, this Enlightenment understanding um, of the world. And I'll let, you, I'll let you read through the specifics of that. Um, in the Enlightenment. The moving on, that's this is just a high level summary of some of the stuff that we're talking about. High level summary of, of what I was talking about. Um, I want to let you read those. I wanted to explain it in my own words and then let you read and, and see at the same time um, what was going on. This is a picture of the Silk Road. Um, and so you can go through and read that stuff on your own. I, I but I wanted the things that I had written there to make sense. For you, in week two of um, of this, we sort of stop right there around the Enlightenment time period, and it's there that we're going to shift into looking more at some American history. That is a very, very high level, fast um, approach to all these different time periods, all reinforced in in your books through oh about page mm, 20, 21, somewhere in there. Yeah, about page 21 um, that I, I just tried to highlight for you the, the important things. Again, lots of stuff, lots to chew on, to mull over. Please engage in the readings for that all to make more sense. And I look forward to reading your replies and your posts to some of the things that we've taken a look at this week. Have a great week, everybody.